All right, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome back to 45D Weekly uh, live sessions. Uh, my name's Nick, and I'll be here with you hopefully for the entire time. <laughs> um, this week's um, this week's video is summer weather in Croatia. So uh, we are here to talk about. Um, I've got my notes here for my, all my temperatures and everything like that. But effectively, we're here to talk about the different months um, and the different characteristics and weather conditions that we get throughout those months uh, from basically April through to October. Um, also, we'll talk about how busy the months get, etc. Um, uh, how and when and when's the busiest times in Croatia. And if you stay till the end, we'll tell you absolutely 100% what is our favorite month to sail and to visit Croatia uh, over, over here. So that's what we're in for. So welcome to the live stream and we will get going now. All right, so effectively how it works is I'm gonna talk about what the content of the video is about, what we just said, and um, as we go, uh, as we go through, if you've got questions or if you've got shout outs like this one here from Tracy Stark, love you, Nick. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Mate, we miss you. We miss you. Though I saw you got a post. Are you still in Croatia? Tell me, tell me what's going on. Um, uh, it'd be good to see you. Anyway, um, <clears throat> throw, out, throw out your shout outs. We'd love to know who's watching and where you guys are from um, uh, and why, you know, why you're here watching the live stream, etc. And if you have questions that, um, that you just please put them into the chat, throw them into the chat, um, and I I will get to them either at the time if it's relevant to to what we're talking about um, or or I'll, I'll come to them closer to the end so um, thank you everyone for being here and um, I'm feeling a lot better than last week um, if you caught last week's last week's live stream I was on the way down in sickness and I just after that I just caved even even worse and I've been I've been pretty useless for the last seven days so i um, feeling a little bit back up and at the plate now, which is good. So um, <clears throat> let's get into that. So effectively, the different months uh, and the weather that we experience through these months. So we're gonna start off and um, basically the season starts at, at about mid-April, okay? So mid-April, um, this is a month where we consider this a really good sailing month. There's a good wind um, and it's good sailing and often the company regattas are held around this time as well. So if someone is coming in through like um, uh, a corporate event that they're going to sail and they're often um, with one design fleets, they're often held in these months. So like the Hansa Cup comes in uh, April, May. I think Hansa Cup comes in in May, which is another sort of like uh, join in corporate event with Hansa Yachts, um, but there's a number of regattas held by places like Sailing Forever or different corporate organizers, uh, and they do these around this April May time uh, because it's it's much quieter. There is not so many things open here. Um, uh, the nights are quite cool, um, so <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that's still it's still there. Um, the nights are quite cool. So you are looking at probably around April, you want to look at a boat with heating, uh, with a Webusto diesel heating system or something like this so that you can be nice and cozy at night. Uh, but the days are still getting really fresh, nice sunny weather. We can definitely still expect rain in and around April. Um, uh, yeah, like I mean, you've got these weather systems coming through that are going to produce a little bit of rain. The the uh, the density of the water is there, and it will it will do this. So um, as we as we move into into May, because in April not everything's open yet. By by no standards, everything is open. You've got some conaba on the islands that are open. The ports are starting to take boats, um, uh, but they're not really. It's it's not an overrun area. We're not busy, and most of the the island the further out island restaurants. They're not going to open until we get into, into May up here. So um, looking into May, the May, this is, this is a, it's a great month. It's an absolute great month to come and sail uh, because you've still got this sort of leftover from the, from the winter weather patterns moving around. You've got good wind still coming through in May, but you're getting into this summer, definite summer feel with, um, with May. And if we look at our uh, temperatures, where's my, I've got, I've got my thing set up here. Here it is. Uh, if we look at our temperatures, Mahina made this for us. 
Thank you, Mahina. We couldn't find the information we needed, so she went and made this today. Um, so we're looking at April here. Look, we've got 16 degrees. She's going to put Fahrenheit here for those um, Americans that are watching that like I can't convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. They might not be able to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit easily. Anyway, so average day temperature 16 degrees and average water temperature 15 degrees Celsius. Like I'm 100% swimming in April. I love it. Um, but it is cooler. You've got the winter weather that's kept the place cool. All right, so that's that's in May. But whereas we move into May, we start to get this more summer feel, uh, 19 degrees average temperature in the day. So it could be getting, whoops, uh, could be getting well up to, oh, oh, could be getting well up to the, the 20s and 25s of a high, but that average, yeah, about 19. Uh, and the water is starting to warm up. Like, I really like this water temperature. 18 to 20 degrees is great for me. Uh, but obviously, that's still on the cool side for a lot of people. So, um, so May tends to be that, that still getting into the summer vibe. Um, but not quite into hot, hot weather. We're not sweating all the time. And we, if we get a, get a colder snap come through, it can be still, right, I'm wearing a, wearing a jersey and thing at night and I need a jacket when I go out sailing uh, just in case it is a bit colder on the breeze. Um, so, um, moving on, here we got there. And this is, yeah, May is definitely when restaurants are starting to open. Uh, basically, by mid-May, most of the restaurants sort of on our tour in and around um, uh, Brach, Hua, Shulta, into Vies Island, all this this area around central Dalmatia, most of the island conifer, 95% of them are going to open by mid-May, definitely. Consider the season full going by June, so um, they most of them are opening at the beginning of May, um, fingers crossed, and I keep encouraging them to to do so. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's... It's really important to to know that when you show up in April, you're not necessarily going to have everything open. Ferry lines aren't going to be running as much. Um, uh, but once you hit May, there's definitely more happening, more going on. Um, <clears throat> end of May. So weather patterns, once we hit the end of the May, the weather patterns are beginning to slow down. They're beginning to settle. All right, so um, this this flow of the um, the low pressures moving across the Mediterranean and then rising up um, around the other side of Croatia, this is this is really starting to take its just normal normal flow. But the low pressures are not as moving as fast anymore, and the differential between the low and high uh, is not as much. We don't have this steep gradient which is producing more and more wind or more squeezes between between the high and low pressures. Um, and that is bringing lighter winds, all right, and it's bringing less extreme changes. So definitely towards the end of May, we're into that. We're getting heat, and the sea breezes are starting to come in and work as the sea breezes do, which we'll get to that. Um, actually, we'll get to that right now. So um, with, yeah, and once we're into end of May, we're starting into June, with the heat starting, and the day's really starting to heat up, like what's our temperatures? Um, coming out into end of May, June. June, we're up to 25 degree average, and the and the sea's warming up as well. So definitely, um, definitely getting getting a lot warmer. And because of this, we're creating this sea breeze uh, of the the land heating up and the water, the cooler air from the sea pushing down the coast and, and pulling in to replace that that um, air on the land and causing our sea breeze. Now, this. This time and this the sea breeze is like a it's a northwest I'd call it a prevailing wind here in Croatia. The northwest would be our prevailing wind, though it's not like a tropic zone or it's not like a um, a trade winds area where it's always blowing from one direction. But especially in the summer, the prevailing wind is more um, is is always more from the northwest and it's it's from up higher. And um, in, in Croatia on the coast there, and it flows down the coast. So in areas like central Dalmatia, this northwest can get quite um, it can get quite strong. It's um, <clears throat> it's a it's a really great sailing breeze. And as we'll get into August and all that sort of thing, we'll talk about how important that sea breeze is. Um, I guess my, my phone keeps timing out now when I'm not looking at it. <laughs> um, all right, so definitely into there, we're getting these prominent northwest breezes, which are our, sort of our bread and butter when you get into midsummer as far as wind goes. So June, all right? June, really the, the sea, as we saw from the chart just before, is starting to heat up 22 degrees. And yes, I love the chart too. Anna says it. 
easily converted. Thank you very much, uh, Mahina, for putting us together with that. Um, <clears throat> this clear skies every day, all right, we've, we're really warming up, we've got the sun out. It is very uncommon to have much rain through June. Like, there will be some, but it's not going to last for a long time. Um, now, I've got a video also. I'm going to add a few videos throughout this just to show a bit of the weather that we've experienced uh, and what it looks like um, through the time here in Croatia that we've been spending it. But what I, uh, the reason for this video is this is really brilliant climbing weather. Like, June is our sun sail climb month. So we run a rock climbing sailing trip, which is where we cruise around on the yacht with a bunch of people that like climbing or want a bit of adventure. Uh, we're still doing a sailing holiday, still visiting everywhere else, but we're uh, focusing on places we can go to climb. You want to climb? Cool. If you don't, you can still swim and sail and sunbathe and all those sorts of things. So we're right on the cusp of summer, all right? And it means that um, that we're not so hot that the rock isn't heating up crazily, but effectively it's still morning sailing and then afternoon sailing. We're not, uh, we're st uh, sorry, uh, climbing, um, because it does get that hot on the walls. Um, I just want to see that chart again. I think it was 25 degrees. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, average temperatures in June, 25 degrees. And we're definitely getting up to, you know, there's, there's going to be days that are 30s and there'll be days that are 20s. Like it still gets nice and warm. But again, June, as far as the sailing goes, uh, we don't need air conditioning at night in June, really. Um, we, you know, it's, it's still cooling off enough that it's, it's quite, quite comfortable. So I'm going to show you uh, one short video of our Sunsail Climb Tour. It's just a promo video that we did a couple of years ago. Um, because you can see the sorts of weather, the sorts of gear we're wearing, some sailing and everything. So enjoy this video for 57 seconds. All right, um, <clears throat> so that's our Sun Sail Climb Chiller. Uh, that, is, that tour was a lot of fun. Uh, and thank you heaps to the crowd at uh, Red Scope um, for uh, putting that video together. They came along, um, friends of ours from Australia came along and filmed so that I could actually do some sailing and stuff like that and be in the video uh, and put that together. So one of, our, one of our coolest videos that they made for us. Um, that spot that you see a lot of footage from there is on the south side of Khfad. Um, and that is a, it's a beautiful spot. The, the thing about that is this massive um, sea cliffs uh, that, that come into from, from there. Um, and when we get, oh, so this is, this is something I want to talk about in relative to the wind. We don't get forecast big winds in, um, in June, July and in the summer in Croatia as such. But that does not mean that there aren't places that get a lot of wind. So um, if I look at here, I'll just bring you up an area. I'll show you on my phone. Here we go. Um, so this is... This is where we are. I'm, I'm over here in, in Split, um, and sorry, in Trogir. But this is Khoa here, and now this is the south side of Khoa Island. If I zoom out just to give you a bit of context, there's Split up there. This is Island Vis. Um, so down here, so this is, this is a very steep um, part of land. They grow a lot of wine on the south side of this, uh, Plavats Mali, because it gets a lot of sun because it's so, it's so steep. Um, but more importantly, as far as wind goes, if we've got a, a northeast uh, like wind forecast to come, uh, where's my 
can I look at this camera and make it come? No, I'm, no, I'm not coordinated enough to do that. <laughs> uh, basically, but come from the top of the screen, top right of the screen, northeast, and down over Fire Island, then you're gonna get some serious weather if it's, at, say it's 15, it says it's 20 knots, then this topographical effect of these big mountains uh, are going to make a huge difference to that wind speed on the other side. So on the south side of Hua, in a, in, a, in a northeast wind of 20 knots forecast, you could expect a lot of wind. So be very careful of this because even if we get a nice, you know, easy border um, up in the Parklini Islands or an easy border at, at, at um, uh, Brach or something, it could be very strong in places like Karstella where it's coming off the hills and um, in the South Akhvar where it really rips off there. Now that one isn't going to happen necessarily as much um, in the summer months into June, July, August. Though what's important here is that the northeast, sorry, the northwest sea breeze, sorry I'm touching everything here, the northwest sea breeze running down this coast, it's like clockwork pretty much. It's going to come up um, at, at sort of 11, 12, 1 o'clock and it will increase. Now Traditionally down that area, the afternoons you should receive 20 to, well, 18 to 25 knots, somewhere in the vicinity of that, uh, quite regularly in the afternoon. It's, it's almost something you can just guarantee on. So what could be very, very smooth in the morning, amazing time to swim around the rocks and enjoy that area, you could have a decent 20 knots and wave that goes with it because it's got a long a long fetch running down there uh, all the way from from this side here and that's that's really kicked in by the sea breeze um, moving along so um, really important to just be aware of that in the areas that you sail. You also get this through here through the Husky Canal all right or the channel this can also get a very strong sea breeze running through here um, and especially once we move into like we're looking at um, uh, into the end of June and then getting into July, this is really, around the central Dalmatia area, this and the south here, this is where you're gonna get wind. If there's not wind anywhere else, this is where you're gonna get wind. Um, yeah, so, uh, we've got a few comments coming up there. Nice, from Tracy Stark, all right, I'll better get my little chart here. Um, awesome time, Blair was actually on that Sunsail climb trip, thank you Blair, uh, it was an amazing time. Um, Gasoline, Lichtenstein, okay. Do you ever get uh, get in contact with a Tramontana? Okay, um, yes, kind of, but it's not, we don't, uh, don't feel it like you feel it uh, maybe in Italy or something like that. Tramontana, oh, someone can correct me, but is effectively the north, uh, or is it west, northwest, or is it north? I thought it was north. Tramontana is north, so the north wind. It's, it's usually gonna split either way. All right, it's going to be, we're going to get north, um, which I don't know where the camera's going, we're going to get northeast or we're going to get northwest. Very seldom do we get this north wind actually making it over the hills um, and, and into Croatia with, a, with a, proper, a proper northerly Tramontana. So I'd say yes, I've experienced it. Um, it didn't come in any major force. It was just a bit of a weird weather pattern maybe you know but it was strong enough to actually override what was going on in the surrounding area or the the prevailing winds so i think it's more to do with the top topography of the area and the the mountain range that separates the coast and, and inland croatia that's what really drives our our wind either from the northwest or from the northeast but i have have had it through there but it's not it's not anything regular like you would get in italy um or in uh in, in greece and the other places like that Oh, excuse me. Okay, um, back to the regular program. <laughs> um, why does it keep resetting? I'm not quite sure. All right, brilliant climbing weather anyway, so I love, love June for that. Um, and after end of June comes along, it's just too hot, in my opinion. It's too hot to do that sort of rock climbing. Um, like hiking as well, it's just, it's just too warm um, to be hiking in the middle of the day. Right, these, these months like April, May, uh, and we'll get into, into September, October as well, um, these are just amazing for that more active, I wanna be on the hills or I wanna be walking or anything like that. It's, it's, it's really nice in that sense. Um, so, 
We talked a little bit about the sea breeze there, and that's something you need to always consider. Uh, and actually, I'll put up the map once more because there's one other area that is really important. That's right, basically right in this main section here. There's a lot of traffic that runs in and around here in the summer because it's it's coming through the split gates. This is the split gates here. So any charter boats coming from split, uh, Karstela, Trogir are coming around or through this gap. Um, and you get a lot of traffic moving across to Klar, uh, boats going every day, speed boats going to V's and all this. Uh, and so you're gonna use that, if you're central Dalmatia, you're gonna use that a lot. Um, in this area and that sea breeze will affect the conditions there massively um, and if you're taking a speedboat tour while you're over here um, they go in the morning figure which out which way the route's going but if a lot of them go straight across to Vis and, and then down and around to the islands like this and back and by the time the afternoon comes back if you're punching through that um, that sea breeze at 20 to 25 knots it gets to be a bit of a rough um, and wet ride so um yeah something always to always to take into account when considering your um your passage and everything is, is know that that's there because especially if i'm coming out of vitabolsk and going up uh Hrvaski canal and and around to start to get out of Hla, i want to do that the majority of that journey in the mornings while it's calm once that sea breeze comes up uh, five, ten knots, then it will squeeze down the Havaski Canal and you'll be fighting it all the way up there. Yeah, it's great sailing, depending on who you're with. Yeah, half an hour with your guests at, at 20 knots on the nose is, is, is about enough. So if you've put, put a bit of um, distance up into that headwind already, then you can actually use that wind, bear away and sail to these like fast and fun. It's just, it's really nice. Um, okay, let's look into July and August. Okay, so when we talk about those sea breezes, they're typically coming up by one or two in the afternoon, all right, and then they're going to be finished by about six or seven in the evening, all right. Now, this is um, uh, very conveniently right around when everyone is docking. <laughs> all right right around where everyone's docking so that's 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 calm not karma that's just um great timing and of course you're going to get these crosswinds uh in spots like starting that so let's let's look at another um video and i'm going to talk while i uh go over this one this was oh that's october though mm. no, I'll, I'll, I'll do that anyway let's have a look at this one All right, so I'm going to fast forward through this one a little bit because I'll show more of this later because this is October weather. But what I'm looking at here is that it's the wrong video. These sort of conditions right here is very common for mornings. Okay, mornings getting this really calm, nothing much sailing going on. This is one of our boats and another, this is us on, on the Hansa 548. And we were just cruising out here. We had sailed four or five miles up the coast, just drifting along and enjoying ourselves. But it, it wasn't until later where we got this um, breeze finally fill in and we got some really nice sailing conditions uh, that we could that we could enjoy. But um, that that really calm morning, we, we, we want to plan around getting the wind in the afternoon. So because of those calm mornings, you then wait, you get your wind in the afternoon, and then you're coming to go into the dock at around about three, two, depending on the month you're coming in, um, o'clock in the afternoon, and the sea breeze could be at its strongest. Like coming into somewhere like Stadigrad to go on the pier, the sea breeze is gonna be beam on to you. So ideally, if you're, if you're a bit skittish on the docking, that's a tough one. It can be a really tough one because it's right on the beam. Um, and so that might be something you plan to either come in later or when it's calmer, or actually quite early, just to avoid um, the possibility of a very strong wind and a lot of kerfuffle with a lot of boats. Or you can sail in a different month, which is what we'll talk about. Um, so that that's always gonna come in right in while it's docking. So if you're getting into high season, now we start talking about July and August. Let's see those summertime temperatures again. Okay, so once we hit July, we've got an average temperature of 28 degrees water's right up there it's nice and warm now okay um average water temperature 28 degrees that um sorry um air temperature of 28 degrees meaning we're getting highs 
uh, of anywhere from 30, 35, uh, you know, it can get really quite warm um, through these months. And because of this also, it's it's a very settled time. Our, our low pressure systems are kind of move all the way and we're in the stationary area where we've got very calm winds and we've basically got to rely on the sea breeze for any wind at all. Unless there's a particular pressure system that comes through, we're waiting for the sea breeze in the day um, in order to get some wind. So the mornings are going to be deathly calm, beautiful for swimming, lovely for exploring and snorkeling and just being out on the water and anchoring in, in calm bays. Um, though then we want to get a little bit of that breeze. If we get any through July and August, uh, typically that has been a really calm couple of months. Okay, so if you're coming to go sailing, I don't, res uh, I don't recommend July and August um, traditionally because they are just, they're calm. They're really calm. And you've got to do that afternoon uh, wait for the sea breeze trick. You can have some stunning conditions once it comes into that afternoon and the sea breeze is there. You really can, but it's generally always going to be from the northwest, so you need to plan your, your trips. Nothing wrong with that, just good to be aware of it. Um, and the issue with that is that this is, July, August is our high season, okay? It's, it's our time where you're going to have the most people, all right, and the least space on the dock. So the fight to get onto the dock, uh, to get a space on the dock is, is quite, it's quite big. You know, you've got, to, you've got to be aware that everyone's going to be going to try and get a spot in the evenings. And they start from anywhere from one or two, or even earlier sometimes. So just be aware of that. Um, now, with this... These, like July, August, these are real Mediterranean summer months. This full Mediterranean lifestyle, not lifestyle, climate. That's what July and August really represent. Um, now, along with that comes more heat. All right, we're into August now. I think average temperatures are up around 30. Um, there we go, 30. And the, the water's 25 degrees. I really don't like it when the water gets that warm. But um, with that heat comes more tropical conditions comes the squalls. The possibility of these quick rain and thunder and lightning squalls coming through the area. And they are very real, all right? Um, I've got a shot here from August this year uh, as we cruise down the coast. Um, keeps muting my microphone. And you can see that the 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 thunder caps and everything, they're just holding a lot of water and they just want to let it all go along the coast there and it's just moving through. Um, here we go, I'll play that once more so I can talk through it. <clears throat> and because of all that, that heat that is, that is causing the rise and the, the, um, the humidity, it's going to bring these thunder conditions, these lightning conditions, and then a, often a quick uh, a quick smash of rain. Now these can last anywhere from 20 minutes as a squall passes over to two hours uh, if there's a proper proper system traveling with it, but it's caused by this heat um, and it's I, I love them. I love them. You do very much need to be aware. You don't want to get caught off guard on anchor uh, if you're dragging in the wrong direction. Uh, I've got another shot here from August July, July this year, uh, th this last season gone, where we had this huge thunder cap come through. Now it was in the forecast. Like if you pay attention to the to the VHF radio um, and the and the forecast, the local forecasting, then you can you can be um, you can be ready for these. Uh, they're still going to come quite. They can come in quite quick, sometimes unexpected, not always forecast. The really small squalls are just squalls that can be created by an island, but you can be ready for them. Uh, and if you watch, basically you watch the clouds, watch the clouds, you're going to see this coming, this rising cumulus, um, you know, really lifting up these big, what we call anvils, uh, full of moisture, uh, full of wind, and then they just come closer and closer, bam, they hit. And they can hit with 20, 25 knots, 30 knots of wind, uh, and then the passing of the front, and then it will just sort of all calm down afterwards. This is a shot from um, from the just after the squall come through. It had been so hot. We'd sail from last over, so hot. And then I saw this coming in. Uh, our one of our other boats I was with was on a mooring, so I looked. Said stay on that mooring. Uh, I picked up my anchor and moved to another spot just because I, I wasn't holding hard at that point. I just dropped it in a nice, 
nice nicely. Uh, and this is this is the aftermath, and the swimming was amazing. I do love it. I absolutely love it. And um, and <laughs> the kids on the boat were like, "Can we? Can we jump? At the, well, it's scary. Can we jump in the water?" And so it was. It ended up with be me and the two mothers that were on the boat. We went swimming. Eventually, they the coaxed the kids out and they they jumped in as well. But it was it was all very exciting. And of course, the water was super warm. Uh, the rain was cold. It was refreshing and amazing. Uh, so those 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 rain squalls come through. Free free shower, free wash of the boat. I really I really like it. So um. Those are really good, but as I say, keep an ear out for the VHF uh, and and watch those forecasts. Basically, just keep an eye on the sky. And if you think, oh, there's something coming, maybe it's time to shorten sail or to find a find a spot to ride it out. Just just be aware. Um, all right. So looking um, looking at a little bit more what the conditions are generally like in in August, as I was saying, it's that calm, really calm time and just really cruisy. Uh, this one from Mila Felice uh, that I played last week, uh, you can have a, you can see in this video that there's just there's very little around um, and a very calm, easy wind to sail on and clear skies. So this is also shot around peak season. So beautiful, absolutely beautiful weather, but that wind didn't last on that day. We got about 45 to an hour of a good wind coming off the top of those islands, but once we got through those islands and then started to head down the coast uh, of, of Sholta, it kind of just, it all just ran away uh, and it, it just died out. So then we were on, on the diesel for a little while. So just, just be very aware that, you know, if you plan your passengers, you might be burning diesel more so in July, August than than um, than other ones, so um, <coughs> excuse me. So those those squalls they're great temp temporary relief. You just got to look out for them. So September, okay. Now I said if you stay, uh, you'll find out what our favourite month to sail here in Croatia is, and here it is. Um, I'm kind of giving that away already because we're not at the end. But September, look, September is. It's like we've just gotten over all of the all of the July, August, and school holidays and everything, and, and the people are through here. Um, uh, they're, they're starting to calm down. There's still tourists around. It's still busy, and everything's still open in September. And yet, that absolute searing heat of July and August for me. What's our temperatures in September looking like? They don't drop as much as the beginning of the season, but they certainly. Um, they certainly are down. So down we, we are dropping about four degrees, 26 degree average um, in, in September. And with the water still holding, um, definitely still holding its temperature, which is great. Uh, as opposed to earlier in the season where the, the water uh, is still not warmed up yet from the, um, from the summer because it's still coming from the winter. Now that it's been July, August, June, July, August, September's water is going to hold its temperature through September through October. Um, so we get this lovely, clear, hot summer weather and the temperatures during the day nice and hot except the sea stays warm though the cooler temperatures of the night come through which for me is ideal. Again, we're getting away from that must have air conditioning running in order to sleep comfortably. Um, we get a little bit more breeze coming up. We have those those weather systems moving across the Mediterranean in a bit more of an orderly fashion as opposed to being held up by this heat of July and August. Um, so we can get much more regular winds. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Let's have a small drink here. Um, much more regular wings. So this is the sort of time where I think, right, if you're wanting to do a bit more hiking and a bit more sailing or rock climbing, any of these sort of activities that are going to be out under the sun, 
September is just an amazing month. Our September, for the past four years, our September uh, was the first month to be completely booked out and it would be booked out for us, our premium tours, a year in advance. Uh, we basically had a couple of families that would just keep coming back on oh, two weeks each on in September because these this is with the, with the best times. The, the crowds are much lower than July, August for sure. As I said, school holidays have gone um, and everything still stays open. Whereas when we move into October, um, October, things start to really slow down, all right? The people will say over here that the um, that the the weather is a bit of a, a gamble or a mixed bag through October. Uh, I would I would agree and disagree. I'd agree because yes, we are, we've got our, our weather systems moving across. It's likely we're going to get more of this um, southeast weather or Hugo, uh, which comes from the southeast and um, can can bring more disturbed weather. Um, weird pressures, everyone complains about the Hugo giving them, um, the Southeast Hugo giving them headaches over here. Uh, we get a little bit more of that and the, the system tends to act more as, as a, an every week type system of this low pressure moving across then moving up. So we get the Southwest weather moving around to Northeast and the border and then over to Northwest and then calms down and then repeats. So it's, in one way, it's a mixed bag saying, yes, you could get some different systems um, and uh, and maybe some rain. Could you get a couple of days of rain? Possibly, as opposed to just a squall comes through and then it's gone. Uh, though, but on that, you can also plan your passages a lot better as well. Now, <clears throat> October, October, things start to close down in Croatia. Now, I believe the season is constantly shifting a little bit further, as in um, October is staying open much more than it did the first time uh, I, I had a had a October in Croatia. There's a lot more staying open. So, um, and yet the weather the weather to me is absolutely stunning in October. Let's see a little bit from um, our. We did our first sharpen up flotilla uh, was in last October. All right. So here's a few um, here's a few clips from that that I'll talk talk with October one. Um, So this was our first day out. Uh, we'd, we'd left the night before. First day, first morning uh, on Sholta. And we were all swimming in the morning. It was, it was stunning. We parked up, anchored in this bay with the three boats for the flotilla. And it was, the temperatures were absolutely great. It was a cool evening. Overnight was cool. But the day was just lovely. Um, absolutely lovely. And this was a very calm morning. We were expecting... Maybe a little bit more wind to come up, but the forecast was very light. So we just enjoyed the slow day and did some more uh, maneuvers around around the um, uh, the parking the boat and maneuvering under power and different things. Um, so this this is this is potentially October weather. All right, we can certainly have more wind, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But it was just very very calm, very beautiful. Um, and it stayed calm all day. So we had a couple of different winds um, try and help us sail this day, but it was it was pretty calm. Uh, if I skip forward a, bit, a little bit here, um, just very very calm sailing. <laughs> and it, yeah, that's that's the way it went. But if we look at the Oh, my microphone was on mute. That was great. <laughs> so I'll just pause that one there. But effectively what I was saying there was it was a very calm day, very calm morning. And then we had the, the sea breeze come up and add to us. We sailed out of that area at six or seven knots and then had this beautiful sail to Stadiglad on Hla, uh, where we found the island, sailed up the channel until the wind died and then put ourselves into the dock here. But you can see on the right down here, this is Stadigrad on Hvar Island. And in the summer months, this is just hoofing. Like there's so many boats in here. All of the port side is full. All of the starboard side is full. And you need to be in here by two or three o'clock to get a spot um, July, August. Um, 
Yeah, now we, there'll be another uh, live stream next week and we'll cover a few things about how we get onto the dock and things like that. Uh, but this is the town of Stadigrad and there's not many seats out and everything like that. Um, I'll just pause that for a second. But it's, it's definitely, there were still restaurants open and still, still nice time to be had. Uh, this is a shot here. I like this shot because this shows a little bit of the wind that was coming in the next day when we arrived at Vis. We got a really nice sail from Stadigrad to Vis. It's about 12, uh, 15 miles, maybe 16 miles. And when we got here, we had this stiff 18 knots uh, flat water though. That's why we chose to come here um, of this northwest blowing. And we used it to do some, some picking up mooring practice and some docking practice. But you can see the flag blowing there and it's causing quite a bit of cross breeze uh, on this yacht as it tries to come into the dock. Um, Truth be told, the man on the dock was not being very helpful um, with his directions on this one, and it, it wasn't easy. It was a very hard position for, for this boat to get into, and it took a few attempts. Uh, on the last attempt, I swear it would have been fine, but we decided to move him over to another spot. But you can see that that 10 knots on the beam can, can really affect you trying to dock if you're dock, docking at that, that adjacent angle. Um, so understanding what wind you're going to have at your port when you arrive and all of this is really, really important. Um, looking into a bit more of October and a bit more footage of Croatia, as we left, um, as we left there, we sailed also, left, left Viz and sailed down to uh, Komija. Now this was a beautiful day. We got into Komija, we had a, we managed to sail half of it, but the rest was very, very light, so we motored in. Uh, and then I went swimming. And it was absolutely stunning. So the water temperature now, and I'll bring the chart up once this video finished playing, it is definitely cooler, uh, but it's still holding heat from the summer. So the dock at Comesia here was open um, and working for us. There was very few restaurants open in Comesia uh, on this trip. So this is 25th or something of October now. Um, and yeah, there were, there were very few, very few. Fail. <laughs> anyway, very few restaurants open at that time, but this is the port of Comesia on Vis. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful place to stop. Now they had taken out a number of the, um, mooring boys. And so there's usually a whole mooring field to the left here and to the top of the screen. There was only a half dozen of them left in there. So we were on the dock, but um, we sailed, sailed the south coast of East the next day and got a really nice breeze to just keep cruising down the coast. We had a lot of fun. So it's, um, the, and as you can see, there's no really, not really any other boats around. There was so few yachts out with us, um, that's one of ours, <laughs> uh, that it was just like having Croatia to yourself. Um, it was definitely uh, this evening, we had one more flotilla out with us. Um, but yeah, effectively that was, that was kind, of, kind of all of it. Um, there just wasn't a lot of boats around. So that was, a, that was a really nice experience for those that hadn't sailed Croatia out, out of season um, or out of the peak seasons before. Um, the other aspect of that that I want to hit is that it just doesn't get so busy. Um, now, if you look at this next clip, this is Steneva Bay. Steneva Bay is on the south side of Vis. Um, now, this is pretty protected from, from all northern angles. Uh, anything from the south, if it'll get in here with the wave, you don't want to be in there, it'll be horrible. But most all north angles uh, are good. And um, I'll show you Steneva Bay here because it is really, it's quite a stunning spot. But in the peak season, there are so many boats coming and going from here. And they've, they've cordoned this off now so that you've got a swim line, but these are all the tour boats, speed boats that are coming and going through the day. Now this is mid, this is August, okay? This shot was shot in August, um, and it surprisingly doesn't look as busy from the air as it feels when you're in the bay. Um, but this is August at Steneva Bay into the afternoon. Um, and, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a fair few boats in there, and there's about five moorings to pick up, um, and I'm at the center of the screen right there in the, in the blue C57, and I've got two tour boats parked up next to me. Um, and I said, yeah, that's fine for you guys, stay on that side. But as you can see, there's a lot of boats coming in and going out, and they're just constant flow 
all the time. Whereas this was us in October. <laughs> That's the difference. That's us in October. Um, there was two other boats there, I think. Um, and one of them left while we were there. We went for a swim. And this is more how it looks when there's not so many people around. So you can really choose choose your adventure in Croatia as to what what exactly is important. What do you want to see while you're here? Um, there we go. So that is the the most part of of what we're here to talk about with the weather over those summer months. Uh, I'm just going to double check my notes, see if I had anything else there. That's right. I wanted to see that chart once more for our October um, temperatures. Um, oops, I've put the wrong one up here. I apologize about that. Um, oh, damn it. <laughs> put the wrong one up. Um, anyway, so this is October down here and 21 degrees average temperature and uh, average sea temperature is still at 21 degrees, whereas earlier in the season we're down at 15. So, um, yeah, that's that's just just where we're at. We've now gone through November, um, November, December. I've sailed through both months um, and January, start of January. You'll see the vlogs coming up soon. Uh, and it's just, it, it's, it's beautiful to be out in Croatia all year round. But as far as summer weather goes, that's what we've got. So you can sort of look at what, what you want to do with your trip, um, what conditions you need for you know swimming or what your people want and temperatures and all that sort of stuff like that. But um, uh, effectively, that's that's it. You can you can choose to come April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and I think you'll have a great time at any time. Just pick the one that suits you best. So um, we had a couple of question comes there, and I love that. Yeah, Mahina said love these summer squalls. They they really. I, if you can be confident in your boating and you know that you're safe and that you're tied up well or you're anchored well or you're, you know, you've got the right sails out, enjoying those squalls is just, it's part of, part of sailing. I love it. Uh, Graham T, have you found any good apps for tracking the wind or the weather here? I found windy wasn't great. Okay, this is a really good point and um, Quill's gone and put up here, predict wind is good. Yep, so... <sighs> It's a, it's a really good point, and there's there's a whole there's a whole conversation around this. I'm going to cover it very briefly, but I want to do another video on this um, and just update my last one I did because weather apps they they keep changing, um, and they change no matter how, uh, depending on how much you're paying. And in that sense, it's apps like uh, like Windy or like Predict Wind. I use Predict Wind. I have a subscription to Predict Wind, um, which will give you a forecast that still takes into account topographical effects. Now if you get a basic windy forecast, often it's not taken into effect any uh, into um, into account any topographical effects. So it's just giving you a whatever um, level uh, height above sea level or at sea level pressure and then creating a forecast around that. So uh, what might happen is down through that Fasky Canal we talked about where you've got high mountains on the north side um, and you've got another island on the south, it's going to squeeze through there. Now it will really squeeze through there. The forecast might be 12 knots but there could be 25 running through there and that's something you've got to know from either local knowledge um, or having a, uh, an app that's going to actually take that into account. So when you download the grid files, like mostly what I use is called uh, Weather Track. Um, uh, Weather Track simply because it gives me a raw grid file and I interpret that and then go, right, well I know that's far and that's that's Brach and I'm gonna have more wind in there and generally when it's from the northeast, it's stronger than this forecast or generally when it's from the southeast. And I've just built that up over time. Um, now. Uh, someone's just said HRT Matteo um, in Croatia. Yeah, this is this is the the Hrvatski or the Croatian um, Meteorological Society. They put out good weather warnings, um, and you can search that on Google to get that site. Good weather warnings and uh, and a basic forecast all the time. The VHF is actually surprisingly accurate because they come from this uh, when they when they put these out on Channel 16. Then you move off to your um, relative channel. Um, so I'm watching that as well, but Predict Wind, I still use Windy. Windy's actually really good, especially the web app version, because you can see more detail of low and high pressure to make your own um, 
make your own decisions about what's going to happen there or you know take take that knowledge that says right well okay next says that between this area and this area it's going to squeeze more if it's northwest or if it's northeast it's going to dump off those high hills look at the topography you're not going to get anything that's just going to tell you exactly what's going to happen that's forecasting um, but as far as I I'm I use the most most commonly the apps I used are uh, predict wind paid version the predict wind non-paid version doesn't give a good um, doesn't give a good forecast as such but the um, the system the the three different models that you can get you can sort of mold them together and go right I'm going to use this predict wind model because they are putting together all of this information to give me my best result um, yeah so that's that's most I can really say on that one in a, in a short video, but I will in the future update my weather apps video um, to to help out what we do here in Croatia. Oh. All right, great. So um, that's pretty much all we've got. I haven't got any questions rolling in at the moment, so I think we're gonna gonna sign off very shortly. I'm just gonna double check my notes on here. Um, oh my gosh, I'm not operating things very well at the moment. Um, HRT Matteo isn't marine though, is it? Okay, so if you go to that, so Mahin has just said this, um, she's prompting me here. Um, their HRT Matteo isn't, um, it's, it's actually quite good because it comes up with all the, the squalls and everything that comes through. Um, there is, I thought there was a marine element to that, but maybe I need to check that out um, as far as an app. I use it, when I was thinking of that, I was thinking of the website, um, uh, which is also called border uh, there's one called border and there's one which is the croatian meteorological society they put out a good thing but i'll find those uh, direct links and i'll put them in the comments of uh and in the description of the video for you to check out um later um <coughs> if you come back to the video that's why you got to come back now <laughs> um so i hope this was all all helpful as you saw that favorite month of mine is um is about september uh mahina as far as i'm aware she can comment if i'm wrong but i think she more prefers october because it's even quieter cooler it's and it's beautiful um but that that time of year i i love i love for climbing and for for that cooler hiking type time this is this is may april may for me i think it's absolutely brilliant so but i will sail all year all year my my least Okay, so my least favorite months are usually July and August for sailing. Uh, though this year we had some anomalies. Um, May was one of our hottest months. It was the strangest thing. It was really hot in May and then it cooled off again in June. And this was just out of the box, not normal. Then we also had uh, August. I was expecting to be motoring everywhere in August. I was two weeks on a Hansa 588 and I used the least amount of fuel I have used in a two-week trip in so long. We sailed. I got good winds, um, though that time lapse of the storm coming through from before. Uh, this was in August on that trip, um, and we just we just had so much good weather. This one it was right head on, and I was just trying to get to Makarska to um, to get locked up, so I wasn't sailing anymore. But uh, it was just such a beautiful storm, and. Um, <clears throat> And we'd sailed, uh, one of the best sails was coming from Lastovo to Miet, and we had 26, 27 knots of wind. It was beautiful. So I had an amazing sailing month in August um, this year, which is the first one I've had in a long time. Uh, so, yeah. Now, um, next week's live stream, uh, next week's 45D Weekly is... Dun, 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 dun. Uh, we're going to do marinas and restaurant docks. So what we're going to be talking, we're going to be talking about local practices and customs when it comes to um, booking marinas, city ports, uh, mooring balls, and restaurant docks. So what, what do you need to think about when you're going to these docks? What's included? What's not included? Can I get a reservation? What marinas can I actually get a reservation at? Can I trust it? And how much more do I have to pay to get it? if that's the case. So that's next week's live stream. So please, if you've enjoyed this one, hit the like button on this video. Uh, a lot of people forget to do that and it helps out with our algorithm for more people seeing it. And if you found that there was uh, something else you wanna ask, if you're watching this replay, please drop a comment um, in the video and we will get to that ASAP. And also, 
If you're new to us, please subscribe to the channel and get more videos like these. Um, we're looking at putting out some more videos in the upcoming months to do more learn to sell videos and more location videos. A lot of, a lot of new stuff coming through on YouTube. So thank you for watching. Uh, hit that like on that video. We'll see you next week at the 45D weekly live stream. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to press my button and play my intro one more time. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. We will talk to you um, next time. Remember, drop that like, drop those comments.